Arrested for broadcasting on Facebook Live outside a court in the UK. Sentenced to 13 months in prison the same day. For Tommy Robinson supporters, it's an outrage. For them, he's out on the street telling the truth about Muslim immigration and Islam. A thorn in the side of the establishment, a defender of free speech. Thousands have marched on Downing Street in Leeds and Manchester. More protests are planned. More than half a million have signed a petition. They want Tommy Robinson released. Hashtag Free Tommy has spread across social media and he sought support from some familiar names. So, is this a case about freedom of speech? And is Tommy Robinson actually being punished by the state for reporting on stories the liberal media wants to ignore? Welcome to So What, our series on the important stories you should know more about. Click subscribe to make sure you're getting the latest videos from us. Today, we're talking about a story that has reached every corner of the internet, the arrest and imprisonment of Tommy Robinson. We're going to look at what actually happened in Leeds, whether this is a freedom of speech issue, and why his actions could actually have prevented justice being done. But first, let's learn a little bit more about the man himself. Who is Tommy Robinson? Well, He's not actually Tommy Robinson. His real name is Stephen Yaxley Lennon, but we'll stick with Tommy Robinson because that's what he's best known as. Myself and Robinson go back a long way. I first met him about 10 years ago and I've interviewed him numerous times since. Robinson has a long history of activism on the fringes of right-wing politics. He used to lead the English Defence League, a group who said they were protesting against the spread of radical Islam in Britain. Robinson left the group in 2013, saying he didn't agree with the EDL's far-right direction. I saw things that did not represent me. But he was soon active in far-right circles again, teaming up with the German anti-Islam movement Pegida. You say you want to stop Islamic immigration? Yes. Right. What about building mosques? Uh, we need to stop the building of mosques, temporarily. The same with the immigration. Look, we'll assess it again in five years' time. If, 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 if we've got to... So ban on, five year ban on immigration if you're a Muslim, five year ban on building mosques. Yes. The movement didn't get far. The man Robinson chose to lead in the UK didn't even want to give us his full name initially. No leader of any movement that's gone anywhere doesn't give their full name. What, what's the problem with that? No, I will give my second name in, right, what in is the it? future. So, um, what is your second Scott. name? Scott. Scott. Yeah. Right. OK, fine. We'll clear that one up. So, Robinson reinvented himself again. Now he says he's a reporter working recently as a contributor to Rebel Media, a provocative right-wing political commentary site. But now he works independently. And he's no stranger to jail. He's been in prison for assault, mortgage fraud and a passport offence. And in May last year, he received a first conviction for contempt of court after illegally filming inside Canterbury Crown Court. Four men were on trial for raping a 16-year-old girl. The trial was in progress when Robinson posted a material online describing the defendants as, quote, Muslim child rapists and, quote, Muslim paedophiles. The judge gave Robinson a three-month suspended sentence, saying the conviction was, quote, about justice and ensuring that a trial can be carried out justly and fairly. In the end, the four defendants were convicted of rape by a jury. The judge made it clear at the time to Tommy Robinson that he would be jailed if he committed contempt of court again. So, what happened in Leeds? Tommy Robinson turned up at a Crown Court again, this time in Leeds, where a different trial was in progress. This time, the judge had imposed temporary reporting restrictions, meaning that journalists like me weren't allowed to report on the case until after the jury reached a verdict. I'm being arrested for breach of the peace. I am being arrested. But Robinson broadcast a Facebook Live outside the court to a quarter of a million viewers, including filming defendants walking into court and giving his opinion on them. An hour into the broadcast, police arrested him and the judge gave him a 13-month sentence after a short hearing. Ten months for the new contempt and three for breaching the terms of the first suspended sentence. So, what's all the outrage about? 
There's been a huge amount of criticism of the decision to jail Tommy Robinson, but most of it is based on a misunderstanding of the way the law actually works in the UK. Now, criminal law can be complicated, so for this video, we've asked Adam Wagner to help us out. Adam is an experienced human rights barrister who has been practicing for nearly a decade. To put it simply, he knows the contempt laws and how a courtroom works. And he's going to help us make sense of this case for you. So, why were these reporting restrictions on the trial at Leeds in the first place? At the beginning of every criminal trial, the judge tells the jury not to read anything about the trial in the newspapers or online. Juries are human, so what judges do in really high-profile trials is they put reporting restrictions on. Only while the trial lasts to prevent hysterical or unbalanced reporting of the trial, and that's to prevent miscarriages of justice where a jury will be reading the newspaper and they will see something highly prejudicial about the defendants in the trial. There's nothing sinister about it and it's a system which has worked for a very long time. Was Tommy Robinson, quote, secretly jailed? Tommy Robinson has been disappeared and there's a national ban on talking about it. It's right to say that there were reporting restrictions in relation to Tommy Robinson's contempt, but it's wrong to say he was secretly jailed. We know that because once the reporting restrictions were lifted, all the journalists that were in the room while he was being jailed reported exactly what happened. So despite what the Alex Joneses of this world say, there was never a media blackout on Robinson's conviction. In fact, it took a real journalist to fight for the restrictions on Robinson's case to be lifted. Ironically, Stephanie Finnegan, the local journalist at Leeds Live, who made the application to the court, has now herself been the subject of online hate and abuse from far-right sympathizers. But Tommy was arrested for one thing and jailed for something different. Is that allowed? Robinson was arrested on suspicion of causing a breach of the peace. He told police that he hadn't done anything wrong and that, in fact, he'd been assaulted himself. Someone laid their hand and assaulted me outside court. Yeah, exactly. Other people have swore at me and threatened me about my mother and here I am being arrested for saying nothing. But the way he was acting could still be interpreted as a breach of the peace. By the time he was brought before the court, the judge had been informed of the Facebook post and realised that an offence of contempt of court had taken place and dealt with Robinson on that basis. That isn't unusual. People are often detained by police on suspicion of one offence and end up getting charged and convicted with another after more evidence comes to light. Here's another question. Was Tommy given a dodgy lawyer? Tommy Robinson was given an experienced barrister, an independent barrister. He was given exactly the representation that anyone in that situation would be given. But hang on, his supporters say. He was arrested and sent to prison in a day. That never happens. You've got to understand that contempt happens in the middle of a criminal trial. And in order to stop it, you have to deal with it often there and then. Because the nature of contempt is that it potentially can derail the entire trial. Basically, because the risks of contempt are so serious and can threaten justice being served, the cases are dealt with as swiftly as possible. So, is Tommy Robinson innocent? No, apparently not. And that's not just the opinion of the court, that's the opinion of Tommy Robinson himself. When he was brought in front of the judge, he pleaded guilty. So, is this a freedom of speech issue? Some say the contempt laws in the UK are too strict. They're certainly much tighter than in the US, where people are free to comment on ongoing trials. But Robinson said himself in his live stream, he was at Leeds Crown Court as a reporter, not as a protester for freedom of speech. And the law is clear. When restrictions are in place, reporting certain details of an active case is forbidden. Now, it's likely that there's some genuine misunderstanding of the British system among some commentators in America and probably even here in the UK. But it's hard to avoid the elephant in the room. Most people who have spoken out about Tommy Robinson's sentencing are on the right of the political spectrum. They're keen to make out that Robinson's imprisonment is an example of the pearls of multiculturalism and liberalism and that Britain has become a police state. These are very dark times in the UK. It's a very curious feeling in this country at the moment. But this isn't about anyone's politics. This case 
is about contempt law. Is it because of who he is and what he says? This wasn't about freedom of speech. Everybody, especially Tommy Robinson, knew the rules. He knew the rules because he'd already been convicted of a contempt in a previous trial. The judge who sentenced Tommy in Leeds made it very clear that Robinson's conviction had nothing to do with freedom of speech. But that hasn't stopped right-wing commentators framing the issue in that way. Many of them have got the basic facts wrong, and they're failing to mention an obvious point. Tommy Robinson threatened to collapse not one, but two criminal trials. Hundreds of thousands of pounds of taxpayers' money could have been lost. And more importantly, there was a real risk of the victims of serious crimes failing to get justice. If Tommy Robinson was really bothered about getting justice for the victims of the crimes, then he wouldn't have attempted to derail the trial by reporting it in a prejudicial way. Thank you for watching. You can learn more about the law in this case from the links in the description. There are a few very good articles we recommend, for example, The Secret Barrister's Comprehensive Explanation. Thank you for Adam for coming in and contributing his valuable time. And if you have genuine questions about contempt law or reporting restrictions, then leave a comment.